John Podcast. Hosted by comedian John Ares. What is going on, everybody? It is great to see you guys. I wish the feeling was mutual, but hey, what can we do about it? It's good to see you guys. It's been a long time. Welcome back to the program. This is episode number 78 of the Views from the John podcast. I am your host. I am that John with the view. My name is John Ares. I call myself a comic, but don't put too much weight behind that statement, all right? Because basically what I did is I did the equivalent of kicking a ball across a soccer field, and then I said, look at me, everybody. I'm a soccer player, right? That's basically what I did. If my neighbor's house was on fire and I put it out with my garden hose, could I call myself a firefighter? It's food for thought. Anyways, welcome back to the program. You guys are looking so tan and healthy and handsome and gorgeous and I know looking back at me is rough if you have to lower the brightness on your screen or put on some sunglasses to handle the toxic white that's pouring out of me I get it I have to look at myself every day I understand it and that's something that we're going to jump into right away okay now I know that in some people's minds There's this thing that exists called white privilege. Evidently, just because my skin is white, I've I've led a privileged life. Uh, Last I checked, that's a pretty racist comment or a stereotype. Whatever it is, it's not cool. It wasn't cool when we did it 500 years ago or 100 years ago or 50 years ago or even yesterday. You think I want my life summed up? because I look like Dracula? (laughs) I don't think so, buddy. But here's my point, okay? If you wanna believe there's all these advantages and privileges to being white, let me point out a glaring contradiction. And I am that contradiction, okay? I get it. You think there are advantages to being white, but I wanna, let me point out exhibit A. Look at this face, dude, okay? Is, do you see anything advantageous about the way that I look? Look at me. It literally looks like I just got back from donating nine pints of blood. You know? I look like a vampire. I look like a cast member of The Walking Dead. Okay? You see the size of these ears? They're, they're just about in the elephant class size of family. You heard of a typhoon class uh, submarine. I have elephant class ears. If I could flap these quick enough, bro, I would be able to hover in the air. Okay. I have two color choices throughout the year. White as a ghost with these red splotches mixed in because some sun ended up introducing itself to my skin. I look like Freddy Krueger. So I'm going to say this once. All right. If we had a choice, over what skin color or complexion we had when we came out of the womb, right? Would anybody be holding up a picture of me going, I want to look like that guy? I don't think so, dude. So that's my point. The grass always seems greener, white, right? Everybody wants to be white, apparently. But does anybody want to be this white? I don't think so, man. You think if I really had a say in the matter, I would have came out looking like Casper the Ghost, bro? No, no, all right? I've had to live with the skin for 40 years and I can tell you unequivocally, there's nothing advantageous about looking like, you know, you're a member of the Cullen clan from the Twilight series, minus the good looks and the immortality. (laughs) Oh, shit. Maybe I can call myself a comic when I can make other people laugh as much as I make myself laugh. 
All right, ready for this next one? I've said it a couple times already in this podcast. I have a lot of lingo that I use that really doesn't fit into what I'm trying to say. I say the word right a lot, you know, right, right. Some people say the word like, like, like every other word. One of the sayings and expressions I say a lot these days is, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And it's, and it's not actually me asking you if you know what I'm saying. It's like saying right, but you're not expecting everyone to say right, right. You know, you ever watch Gordon Ramsay? He says the word yes every other word. We're going to make the most amazing this. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm on the phone with my father. He's an elderly guy. You know, he doesn't keep up with today's lingo, right? So I'm trying to explain something to him. And of course, I'm just talking like me. And uh, every other, you know, word is, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So he stops me in the middle of the conversation and he's like, John, why are you always asking me if I know what you're saying? I'm old, but I'm not an idiot. I know what you're trying to say. And I'm just like, dad, slow down, bro. It's just a figure of speech. I'm not actually asking you if you understand what I'm saying. It's just a figure of speech. So it's, it's funny. It's funny how communication and language and that kind of stuff can be all messed up. You know, I had a buddy a couple years ago. He was over my house and we were watching uh, a Netflix comedy special. I don't remember who the comic was. And this guy was laughing his balls off. And he kept calling the comic stupid. He's like, oh my God, <laughs> this guy is so stupid. I'm like, bro, why are you calling the comic stupid? You're laughing at him. So how do you think it's stupid? He's like, no, dude, stupid means it's good. It's funny. I'm like, oh, okay. I just didn't get the memo. I didn't know that stupid meant dumb, but it also meant great. You know, it's, you got to just stay up to date with what the lingo is, right? Now, for any of you who have been watching me put out these horseshit episodes the last couple years, you know that I'm a bit of a conspiracy theory guy. I believe in the man behind the curtain. Uh-oh. Was that not progressive enough? Who says it couldn't be a woman? Wait a minute. Why hasn't cancel culture come after Alice in Wonderland, the movie? You know? The man behind the curtain? Does that trigger any femi feminists out there? The man behind the curtain? Why does it always have to be a man behind the curtain? Why couldn't it be a woman behind the curtain? Pay no attention to, the no, even better, you know, because pronouns are really frowned upon these days. Can't they update the movie to say, pay no attention to they behind the curtain? Or pay no attention to them behind the curtain, you know? Why is cancel culture canceling Snuffleupagus, but they're just going to let this pay no attention to the man stuff slide in Alice in Wonderland, you know? I mean, they've been trying to cancel John Wayne for stuff he said in like 1902, you know? Alice in Wonderland came out in the, what, the 1920s? <laughs> That's a cancel shit so funny to me. But anyways... So yes, I believe in the them behind the curtain. I believe that a lot of the stuff that the news is throwing us uh, our way these days is literally bullshit. And it's bullshit designed to get Americans all flustered and triggered and at each other's throats. There's ulterior motives to literally everything they're telling us about. Because there's a they behind the curtain that's really pulling the strings on all of us puppets, right? So I believe in the they behind the curtain. And when it comes to the coronavirus or the COVID vaccination, I'm no stranger to the conspiracies. However, you guys are going to be tripped out by this. As much as I am a vaccination conspiracy theory guy, I actually went out and took the vaccination, but not for the reasons that you most likely did. I could give a shit about getting the virus. I think I already had it. I think most of us already had it. I think I had it before they even admitted that it was in the United States. And this was in February of 2020. I came home from New York City sick as a dog. And they were talking about how awful the virus was in China at, the, at that point. But it, apparently it wasn't in America. But it was. Because I came home from New York City with the Rona that, that 
month or whatever. Sorry, I hate taking these pauses, but I need to suck down the coffee. If they had an IV drip for coffee, I think I would stick myself with it. I love coffee. So anyways, dude, I am an ant. No, I can't say I'm anti-vaccination. I'm not anti anything really. Okay. My skin is anti-sun, right? But I'm not anti anything. Okay. But I, I had my concerns just like you folks might over the, uh, you know, vaccination. Is there nanobotic robots in it that Bill Gates put in there? Is there alien shapeshifter DNA? Am I going to turn into a 5G cell tower? Am I going to grow a second head, a third leg, or maybe an 11th toe in a couple of years? Yeah, I believe all of that could be true. But I still went and got vaccinated because one day I stopped listening to Bobby and Rufus down at the wastewater treatment plant. I mean, I know they watched House MD for seven or eight seasons, which made them a doctor apparently. <laughs> But I actually listen to my own doctor who's been taking care of me since I've been a kid. He actually happens to be a virologist along with a family practice, you know, practitioner. I asked him the questions that I needed to know and then I just, I went ahead and got it. And now I'm fully vaccinated. And you know what? I'm embracing, okay, the fact that one day I could become a shapeshifter. Who wouldn't want to shapeshift into anybody or thing that they want? You want to turn into a rock? You turn into a rock, then nobody can find you. You want to turn into Tom Cruise so you can walk into the Scientology building in LA? You can do it. Who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want to turn into a 5G cell tower, bro? 5G is the shit. You know what I'm saying? There you go. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really asking you if you know what I'm saying. It's just an expression, right? Yes? Yes? <laughs> So, yeah, I went and got vaccinated. But here's the thing, dude. Like I said, I got it because I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I get that 5G. I'm hoping that I might grow an 11th toe because I want to lean into it. You guys have to lean into any ailments that you are hiding, the, hiding from the world. Let me give you a prime example. Do you guys remember the bearded lady from like the 1920s? Can you imagine if the bearded lady was too self-conscious about being a lady with a beard? She would have never left her house because she was afraid of the ridicule that she would get for being a lady with a beard in the intolerant 1920s, right? Back then, we couldn't even tolerate people that had darker skin color than us. You think people were going to tolerate a lady with a beard? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> so anyways, just take her for example. She leaned into the fact that she was a lady with a beard. She joined the circus and she made a career out of it. But if she grew up in today's climate, she might be too afraid to leave the house because she's got a beard. Maybe she shaves it. Maybe she never joins the circus. Maybe she's so depressed and she got so triggered and bullied and shamed by society that she would take her own life. But she didn't do any of those things. She joined the circus. So I'm hoping that any one of these things play out. Shapeshifter, great. 5G cell service, great. A second head, I can join the circus. And to top it all off, apparently I can't catch or give corona anymore. It's a win, 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 win situation, bro. It checks every box off that I need, all right? So that's why I took it. However, if you don't want to take the vaccination, that is your American God-given right. Nobody should try to talk you into or out of getting vaccinated. It just all comes down to what you want to do. You want to worry about dying or infecting your grandma the rest of your life? Then get it. But if you don't care if you ever get it or you take out your cousin with the asthma, then don't get it. It's your choice. But one thing I do want to say, okay, is even though we are 16 months into the uh, pandemic. And for all intents and purposes, dude, this pandemic is in our rearview mirror. It's behind us. I live in the one of the bluest states in this country. I was born into it, so don't hate me for it, okay? I'm a registered independent. I don't lean either way, so don't go there, okay? But I live in a blue state. It's so blue, I think the Smurfs would move here, 
okay? Um, yeah, Papa Smurf and Smurfette. Dude, why aren't the femi feminists going after the Smurfs? They're all male, except for Smurfette. It wasn't Smurfette created by Gargamel? There's not enough diversity in terms of female to males among the Smurfs. And if the Smurfs are all asexual, which I believe they are, why do they call Papa Smurf Papa? Doesn't Papa automatically dictate like a man? I'm just trying to be woke, bro. I'm trying to get into that leftist mindset. Ugh. All right. Anyways, so what I'm trying to say is that uh, I know some people who are still petrified to leave their house. Okay? Petrified. And they aren't a psychopath or a germaphobe or a hypochondriac like me. And they are literally still bleaching their house by the gallon. When they get home from work, they take their clothes off in the garage and then they set fire to them. That's something people did maybe a year ago. Only if they were like super panicked. But these people are still setting fire to their clothes after work and bleaching their house. And they complain incessantly about how hard it is to live in this pandemic world. Meanwhile, here in the blue state of Massachusetts, we're completely back to normal again. They're not requiring masks indoors, outdoors, anywhere anymore. Okay, and we're going to get to that in a minute because people are having a hard time removing that safety blanket. Even though the CDC, local, state, federal authorities say it's fine now. The pandemic's pretty much done, dude. Plenty of people are vaccinated. You can go back to normal. But people are like, eh, I don't know if I'm ready yet, even though they've been complaining about it, right? So these people I know, they're still bleaching their house, afraid to leave it, right? And they're still complaining about shit. And then here's two different vaccinations, or there used to be three. So it's like, it's, it's no different than if you're drowning, you're drowning because you cannot swim. And there's people throwing you like buoys and swimmies and there's lifeguards out there. And these people are like pushing them away. Like, no, we don't want your help. We don't want your vaccination that could get us to stop bleaching our house and burning our clothes. But they're still complaining that they're drowning and they don't want to drown or die. It's like, how can you help somebody like that? It's no different than if you like, let's say you're on your way to pick up your wife and kids, right? And your car breaks down. And now you're on the side of the highway and you're all upset that your wife and kids are waiting. You don't have your cell phone and your truck's not working. And then as luck would have it, a tow truck and a mechanic drive by. And they're like, hey, can we help you get you under your way? And, they're, and the guy's like, no, no, I'm in trouble. I know you guys can help me, but no, go away. And then the tow truck in the, you know, in the mechanic driveway, and the guy's still got a problem. His truck don't work. He can't get his wife and kids. It's no different. So if you want to continue to bleach your house every day, even though people aren't even wearing masks in full capacity indoor concerts anymore, that's cool. Great. That's great. You can bleach your house and burn your clothes the rest of your life. Just don't complain to the rest of us because there's ways out. And if I can take the mask off and get vaccinated, being the psychopathic germaphobe freak that I am, anybody can do it, bro. And let's fast forward to this next topic, okay? This past Memorial Day weekend, and we're going to get to Memorial Day because our own president and vice president couldn't even acknowledge Memorial Day last weekend. Disgusting. Um, so this past Memorial Day weekend, the great blue state of Massachusetts said, okay, pandemic's over. You guys can go back to normal, right? And we've all been waiting for this forever. Everybody hated wearing masks at first, and then we got used to it right? And now that the government and the CDC has said, okay, you can take the masks off last weekend, people had a real tough time doing it, including me, all right? Last Sunday was the first night that I went out where we could take the masks off. I hadn't been wearing a mask outside since last year, but inside stores, you had to wear them or, they, or they'd kick you out or you'd have 15 Karens yelling at you and you'd end up going viral on TikTok or the internet, right? 
but now the Karens can't say shit. And if they say shit to you, all I'm going to say is, listen, I'm following the CDC guidelines and the store's guidelines, which says I don't got to wear a mask. Plus, I'm vaccinated. So why don't you shut the F up? Because when the vac because when the pandemic first hit, everyone said, follow the CDC, listen to Fauci, listen to the doctors. Okay, that's what we're doing now. We're listening to the CDC and they're saying we don't got to wear masks. So we're not. So most of us didn't like wearing the masks and we could not wait. We dreamt of the day that the pandemic was in the rearview mirror and we could take the masks off. So last Sunday, I could take the mask off. I went into the store maskless, right? I didn't make it more than halfway down the first aisle and I couldn't help myself. I had to take my mask out of my pocket and put it on my face because I literally felt like I walked into the store without pants on. I felt naked. It's so weird. These masks have become like security blankets to people. Like we're little kids with a toy that we just can't leave behind no matter where we go. It's this false sense of security. Like having a mask on is somehow going to prevent us from like dying in a hail of gunfire or some shit. Like it's a bulletproof shroud that we have over our face. It's all mental. So I walked in there and as much as I wanted to take that damn thing off, I couldn't do it. But fast forward to a couple days ago, I went grocery shopping. And for the first time in 16 months, this germophobic, narcissistic psychopath that I am, I took off the spacesuit, left the gloves in the car, and I left the mask in the car, and I went grocery shopping for the first time in 16 months wearing nothing. Nothing. And it felt invigorating. Dude, everyone else who was in that grocery store that chose not to wear a mask with me the other day, we were all like high-fiving each other down the aisles like, look, at, like, isn't this great? It's amazing. Oh my God, you got teeth. You got lips. I forgot what it was to, I forgot what it looked like to see a stranger's lips and teeth. You know, we got to start shaving again, apparently, or taking care of our skin. But what's amazing to me though, too, okay, and this is where it all boils down to. Now that the mask can come off everywhere, doesn't matter if you're indoors, outdoors, no more masks are required in any situation. But there's still a ton of people that can't hang up the masks. So when I went into that second grocery store the other day, without the gloves and the mask, when I say, I would say about 85 to 90% of the people in there still chose to wear masks, okay? which trips me out, but I understand it. I understand people are gonna be apprehensive and it's gonna take a while to kind of warm up to taking the mask back off because we've, we've, we've been wearing them for like a year and a half now, right? So I get it. But what I don't get is the amount of people that looked at me like I was Bigfoot. When I walked into that store maskless, you would have think I was an active shooter. The whole store stopped. The record scratched, you know, friggin' tumbleweeds went by. The entire store when I walked in just went and looked right at me like, you know, like they were going to say something. Like, like a big friggin' red buzzer went off. Eh, eh, eh. There's a guy in the store and no mask. So the whole store just like turns on me and they're, you know, and I'm waiting for something. And I'm looking at everybody like, what are you guys looking at? I'm following the CDC guidelines here, but you should have seen the way people are looking at me. And I get it. People are afraid to take the masks off now. I get it. But don't look at me not wearing one like I'm a friggin' alien, dude. Okay? It, it's unbelievable. If looks could kill, I would have died two feet into that store. But I get it because people's mindset the last year and a half has been trained to look at somebody without a mask as though they're seeing a ghost come out of the ground or some shit. So I get it. Maybe that'll go away. But dude, the way people looked at me, I would have sworn I had like an AR-15 around my neck and I had just walked into a grocery store. Everybody stopped to stare at me. And I'm just like, holy shit. I'm like, I'm in the right place, right? And the guy's like, yeah, dude, you don't have to wear one. Just people in here are just a little, you know. All right, so interesting. 
Have you taken the mask off? Have you been inside anywhere? I don't know. If you're listening to this from Arizona, you probably don't even know what a mask looks like unless you're a doctor or a dentist. And I get it. I get it. But hey, I was born and raised here. What can I do? Move? You want to pay for it? I would love to move somewhere warm. Anyways, so what's next on the uh, what's next on the uh, on the docket here? Okay, we need to discuss some a couple things here. I want to meet. I want to meet up with whoever is on the board of directors for Cancel Culture Incorporated. I want to know. I want to be in one of their meetings. I want to know who these people are, why they're canceling the shit they're canceling, and what gives them the right to cancel something that they don't like, despite the fact that 99% of the other world's population does like it. Like, who are they to cancel something? It's like if they didn't like the color blue just because they didn't like it, they would cancel it, despite the fact that there's probably billions of people that like the color blue. It's literally gotten that ridiculous. So I want to meet the people that are behind cancel culture because I have a couple questions for them. I have more than a couple. But let me just fill you in on a couple of the latest things that they've done. Let's go back to a month ago, all right? There was a huge push to cancel Mother's Day. Because evidently Mother's Day is systematically racist or it's sexist. I don't know what it is, dude. But they tried to cancel Mother's Day. How were... Okay. Let me get to the punchline here. They didn't just try to cancel Mother's Day. They tried to change the name of it from Mother's Day to Birthing Persons Day. That's right, folks. Are you a mother? Are you proud to be a mom? Well, I hate to burst your bubble, but you can't be called a mom anymore. Evidently, you've been reduced to a birthing person. Whoa, a birthing person? Really? I can't call mom mom anymore? She's now my birthing person? Really? Is that progressive? What do I do? I'm going to call up my parents' house right now and go, hey, dad. Is my, is my, is, uh, is mom, I mean, uh, is my birthing person around? Yeah, one minute, John. Let me go get them. <laughs> really? On birthing person's day, should I show up with a card and the flowers and say, happy birthing person's day, birthing person? Oh, oh, that is progressive, people. It's so awful. I find it comical. And that's why I want to talk to these people. I want to know what they're smoking in this meeting. Because I want to get my hands on some of it. Because maybe I can come up with some stuff. You know? Because I got some good ideas. Just like I was talking about. They need to go and cancel Alice in Wonderland. Or at least update the audio. So it's a them behind the curtain. Because that's basically what we're doing, right? They're making, they're making people like me see shit that isn't there because of how woke we are becoming, you know? I'm starting to see sexism and racism in like a stain on the wall, right? Like if my toast comes out looking a certain way, it's like I'm looking at it like my toaster's racist because it toasted my toast too dark or too light, you know? That's what, we, that's what we're being indoctrinated here to see, all right? And then I want to talk about our, our, our lovely president, We were so evidently, some of you out there were so triggered with Trump syndrome that you went, that you went and voted in a whole new problem called Joe Biden. Have you guys t took a look at his report card of what he's done in office? Or do you guys just not care because Trump is gone? I haven't seen anybody address this guy on late night talk shows or anything. It's like since I've been alive, every late night show, every news outlet has made fun of the presidency. No matter who is in office, it didn't matter if it was Obama, Reagan, Kennedy, it didn't matter, right? But for some reason, nobody is saying anything bad about Biden, even though I could give you a list of 50 things that should be of grave concern to every American. Like the fact that the guy doesn't even know where he is half the time. 
and he's running the country? I don't even think he knows what country he's in and he's the president of it. Okay, but that's not my problem, okay? Whatever. You guys think any president we vote in is going to really do any good in this country? Nobody ever has. Nobody ever will. The politicians lie. We get put in jail if we lie to the government. But when the government lies to us, it's just called doing their job. What a double standard. So anyways, last week, our great president and our great vice president, they couldn't even for a moment acknowledge that it was Memorial Day weekend. Not one moment of silence, not one shout out to the troops or first responders, none of it. They referred to it as a long weekend. Have a nice long weekend, everybody. Not one single mention of, of Memorial Day. And this guy is supposed to be our president, our leader of the greatest free world country to, in the world. And you can't even acknowledge the millions of men and women of every single race who gave the ultimate sacrifice dying for this country so you can have the right to spit on it and hate it. Those men and women of all colors who died for this country, fighting for our freedoms, they're the ones that gave you that long weekend. And as the leader of the free world, you can't acknowledge them? Why? Why, Mr. Biden? Why did you just piss off every American-loving and veteran and service member in this country? Because it's racist? Dude, a huge number of our armed forces are not white. You know how many women of color have fought for this country and died for it? What do you think? Only people, only white people go off to war and die and serve for this country? There's nothing racist or sexist about honoring the people who have died and given the ultimate sacrifice of this country. It is so hardcore disrespectful. But yeah, Biden, you're great, man. Make it America racist again. The last president tried to make America great again, but evidently he failed. And this guy is trying to make America what? Forget again? Make <laughs> make America make America demented? It's a mild form of dementia. All right, listen to the next thing that the woke community has said. And this is funny to me. This is hilarious. All right? Evidently, the woke community has 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 somehow taken over the comedy scene. Don't know how that happened. I don't know who let them in the door. But the woke community is saying that if you are white and you're straight, which I happen to check off both those boxes, despite the fact I had no choice in either one, as hard as I've tried to become gay, I just can't do it. I believe you're born that way. I've tried to become gay. The gays have made me an honorary gay. I'm down with the gay community. Got no problem with gays getting married or anything else that they do. But I believe you're born that way. I had no choice in whether I was gay or not. I'm sorry that I'm not gay. I'm sorry I came out straight. I'm sorry I came out looking like a cast member from The Walking Dead. But I had no choice in it. But here's what they're saying. They are saying that if you're white and you're straight, that you cannot do any self-deprecating comedy. Do you guys know what self-deprecating comedy is? It's basically shitting on yourself. It's roasting yourself. It's making fun of yourself. And can any one of us not make fun of ourselves for doing or saying anything stupid or a weird situation that we got ourselves in? No, evidently not. The, the way they think, okay, is that if you're white and you're straight, that means your life has been perfect every day of your life. Therefore, you shouldn't have any reason to self-deprecate on yourself. How is that not racist? 
You're going to sum my entire life up and tell me I can't do something simply because of my sexuality and my skin color. What era did the DeLorean take me into? Are we in the 50s or 60s here? What dimension did I get transported to without being told about it? What is going on here, America? It wasn't right at any point in history when we judged anybody by their skin, their sex, their gender, their sexuality, but it's okay in 2021 now? Okay. I guess I just didn't get the message. All right. Let me talk about a couple stories having to do with a woman that lives down the street from me and me. And I want to see if you guys can't pick up on the contradictions. And then I'm going to leave you until I see you two years from now on episode 79. Okay? Now, let go of any kind of preconceived notions you have. I'm not trying to gang up or talk shit. I'm an observational kind of guy. I'm a registered independent. I sit in the middle. Even though these days, when it comes to common sense, I tend to lean right because the right these days seem to be the only party that has any kind of common sense. All right? Nobody on the right is canceling Snuffleupagus and trying to cancel Mother's Day and, and, and Memorial's Day. That's all far left shit. And whether you're far right or far left, you guys are both whacked, all right? We don't need black or white or left and right. We need common sense, we need balance. Tom McDonald said that. If you don't know who Tom McDonald is, look him up. He just broke the internet, internet a couple days ago by basically calling out the hypocrisy that lives in this country. And boy, did he trigger some people. But his new song, Snowflakes, it's number one on every music platform around the globe. And as hard as they're trying to cancel Tom McDonald, they can't. Because Tom McDonald is an independent artist. He is 100% his own entity. He can't be canceled. So he's not afraid to say to, to talk his shit. He's not afraid to call out the hypocrisy because there's nobody that runs him. He is uncancelable. That's why he's the only artist out there talking about this kind of stuff. Because no other artist can do it because they're owned by a record label. And those record labels want to be woke. The second a, uh, an artist tries to start some controversies by speaking his truth, the record label just instantly shuts them down because they don't want, you know what I'm saying? But when you're 100% your own entity, you're your own boss, you're your own label, you're your own everything, you can do and say what you want. You can't cancel people like Tom McDonald. You can't cancel people like Bill Burr. You can't do it because they are their own entity. Nobody runs them. So I love it. Try to cancel these people. I love it. The more you guys try to cancel shit, the more that we're going to uh, clap back. So anyways, let me talk about a lady that lives down the street from me. And let me see if you guys can pick up on any of the contradictions out of these three stories. Story number one, a year ago, she's standing in her driveway like a meerkat. She's swaying back and forth. She's got her hands on her hips and she looks, she is just bursting with pride. She can't contain herself. And I see it and I say, okay, what did you do this time? Because she couldn't wait to tell somebody because she was proud of herself for this. So she says to me, you're going to love this. I said, okay, what did you do? She's like, I just drove by some Trump supporters who were holding up some Trump signs. And I sped up my car like I was going to hit them. And then I swerved out of the way at the last second. I spit at them, I threw a water bottle at them and hit one of them in the head and I had my horn blared out the whole time. And she was proud of herself for doing it. So I looked at her and I'm like, okay, because I like to be a dickhead apparently and just play devil's advocate here. And let me remind you folks of something. This woman is 60 years old, she's white, she's single, and she's a college professor at a college that is, uh, I believe it's fifty to $55,000 per year. 
and she's teaching your kids these qualities. So she lost her shit at a couple of people on the side of the road holding up a sign for somebody that she doesn't like. And she was proud of herself for how she just nearly hit them and assaulted them. And she's a 60-year-old college professor teaching your kids. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist, bro, which I am certainly not, to throw the contradiction back in her face. I said, okay, you must be a Biden supporter. And she's like, well, yeah, who is it? And I was like, all right. So I said, what if you were on that bridge and you were holding up a Biden sign? Would you want a Trump supporter to drive by you, nearly hit you, and hit you over the head with a water bottle and spit at you? She said absolutely nothing. She went, uh, uh. I completely dumbfounded a 60-year-old college professor to the point where she put her head down and she went inside the house and didn't talk to me for a month. Why are you going to do that to somebody that doesn't think like you? Can't you just leave them alone? Whatever happened to treating people as though you don't want to be treated? Couldn't she say to herself, wait a minute, before I go psycho on some people who don't think like I do politically, would I want them to go psycho on me because they don't think like I do? No. Okay. I'm just going to drive by and leave them alone. Sit. When did that become a foreign concept? Leave your neighbor alone. Mind your own friggin' business. Do you really need to hate somebody because they don't dress like you or look like you or think like you or they didn't happen to lean the same way that you do? Does that make them a horrible person that needs to have a water bottle thrown at their head? No, it doesn't. And I was always taught that the people on the right were the intolerant ones. But you know what I've seen the last four years? All the intolerance is coming out of the left, like Antifa. They call themselves anti-fascists. But if you go to one of their rallies that they're at, and you have an opinion that differs from theirs, they will silence your voice with a boombox playing music or a bullhorn, which is the classic definition of fascism, is silencing people's voices that don't think like you. So they're literally doing exactly what they're preaching against. When's the last Antifa member you met that leaned right? So as far as I can see, dude, as a registered independent, the intolerance and the craziness isn't coming from the right like I was taught. It's all coming from the left. But not everyone on the left is crazy. I know people who are just democratic. They don't agree with this shit going on in the far left. So don't get triggered if you're left-leaning. I got plenty of left-leaning friends, dude. Plenty. And plenty of right-leaning friends. And they don't fit either of the stereotypes that they're associated with. It's the far crazies on either side. But for some reason, we're giving the people on the super far left right now a platform. And everyone's like, why? But yet no one seems to be doing anything about it, okay? Story number two about the 60-year-old white woke lady who teaches your children at a $50,000 a year school. Three months ago, a new couple moved into our nice little neighborhood here that she's, that she's the mayor of, apparently. And she instantaneously hated this couple because she racially stereotyped them. She racially stereotyped them as being far right and she can't handle people on the far right, even though they're actually, nobody knows if they're far right or even right. Nobody's asked them, but she pigeonholed them to be that way based on how they looked because she told me so. And how did she sum up that these people are far right? Because they're white, because they dress a little country, because one of them drives an F-350 Ford pickup truck and a Harley Davidson. Evidently, to somebody who's far left-leaning, if you write out that equation, 
That means far right Trump supporter. And she is a 60 year old, I'll say it again, college professor at a $50,000 a year school that is judging and being bigoted towards people when she doesn't even know the truth of what they are. And she's teaching your kids, guys. Last story. So because she's intolerant of these people, because she's already stereotyped them, even though she knows nothing about them, now she has to ruin their day every chance she gets. So last weekend, these people are in their yard, minding their own business, having a little fire in a fire pit. Do you think she could leave them be? No. She had to be an asshole because she doesn't like them. And why doesn't she like them? Because she thinks they're far right. And why does she think that? Because she stereotyped them that way. So what does she do? A couple Saturdays ago, she calls the police department that she helped defund on a busy Saturday night to come down our street and ruin this couple's time just because they had a fire. And why did I know that she did this just to fuck with them? Because she tells people. Because she's proud of herself for doing it. I think I could probably tell this to my three-year-old nephew. And he would be able to point out 50 different contradictions in that story. But yet you're telling me and as an adult that you can't see through that. Okay. Let me tell you a couple stories about myself and how I checked myself because that's what you guys need to do. Everybody in this country is guilty of something somewhere. You ever remember Jesus's teachings when they're about to stone somebody to death because they sinned and Jesus shows up and he's like, whoa, everybody stop. Whoever here has never sinned before, go ahead and throw that first rock. And nobody could. But yet we are so quick to judge when somebody else screws up. But yet we're perfect? No. You have to be able to check yourself. And in order to check yourself, you got to drop your ego and look at yourself in the mirror. And I kind of have that ability. I didn't used to. It's something I developed. And let me give you my two stories. And then I'm going to let you guys go. Okay? I survived a house fire. So when I smell wood burning smoke, it brings me back to the day that my house burnt down and I almost died and I almost lost everything. So now when I smell campfire, it brings me back to that day. It triggers some PTSD in me. So when I moved into this neighborhood and I would have my windows open on a nice summer night, I would start smelling smoke from somebody's campfire and it would trigger me. All right. I would get upset. And rather than just leaving the people alone, I would grab my car keys and I would drive through the neighborhood and track these people down. I would find the people that had the fire and I would go on their property and I'd be like, yo, I get it. You're having a fire, right? Fires are great. You're cooking s'mores, singing kumbayas, melting marshmallows. I get it. But one thing you might not get is that your smoke is blowing into people's houses. And then the guy's like, oh my God, I didn't, I didn't think about that. And I'm like, yeah, you only thought about yourself. You didn't think about how your actions might negatively affect the neighborhood. And I was all proud of myself. And then when I got home, like I was hit in the face with a frying pan, I realized I'm the asshole. And you know why I'm the asshole in that situation? Because the world does not revolve around me. Just because I don't like the smell of smoke, does that mean I have to ruin a family's night with their campfire? No. No. Do you guys get the point? I thought I was so right pointing out the fact that people don't think about others. But in actuality, I was the asshole for making somebody put out their legal fire just because I didn't like the smell of it. The world doesn't revolve around me. So you know what I do now? I mind my own effing business. And if I smell smoke, 
I close my windows. And if it gets hot in the house, I turn the air conditioning on. This isn't John Ayres's neighborhood. It's not my world. Just because I do not like something doesn't mean it has to be ruined for everyone else, does it? No. And you know who taught me that? Me. I'm going to tell you something else I used to do, which I stopped doing. I used to get triggered and angry at people that I would help when they wouldn't thank me. Two classic examples of how I help people every day is people have a tough time pulling out in the traffic. Traffic around here is nutty. And if you're trying to cross traffic when there's no light or stop sign, you're never going to do it unless somebody lets you go. I understand what it's like to be that person that can't pull out in the traffic unless somebody stops to help you. So I stop to help people pull out in the traffic all the time. But if I didn't get that nice wave through the windshield, that thank you, I would get pissed off at them. Or if I'm at a gas station, I'm holding the door for somebody 50 feet behind me. And then they just ghost me like I didn't just wait five minutes for them holding the door. And then that would piss me off. And I'd say under my breath, well, you're welcome. And then I had a conversation with myself. Another ton of bricks hit me over the head. And I said, why am I getting angry when I help people and they don't thank me? And then that led me to say to myself, oh my God, am I just being nice because I want to thank you? And when I came to that conclusion, I said, oh my God, John, you are an asshole. You are a complete psychopath. So now I continue to help people. And when I don't get a thank you, I'm fine with it because I'm not helping people for a thank you, dude. I'm helping people because it's the right thing to do. And it's the way I was raised. Okay. So even if I don't get to thank you, I mean, helping people is a thankless job these days. It really is. It is a thankless job. So if you're helping just to get a thank you, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. And you're going to be doing it a long time before you get that thank you. All right. Uh, one last thing I have got to bring up because I forgot about it. Okay. There's a lot of problems in this country that need to be fixed, right? America's great. It's a great country. I love it here. I'm not going to pretend like I hate it. I think a lot of people living here are crazy and a lot of Americans hate America but yet they've never been to a third world country where communism dictates everything and they, they're not free. But, you know, we're canceling Snuffleupagus, but yet we're letting some other huge things slide. All right? And I want to bring one of those things up really, really quickly. And I saw this play out a couple houses down from me a few months ago. Um, this new couple that moved in in our neighborhood has a dog and it's really it's a really bad dog even though it's one of the easiest dog breeds to raise and i apologize i can't remember the name of a dog it, it, it's it's like a lassie dog and not to be an asshole here dude but honest to god i know a young lady with down syndrome and another one with cerebral palsy i'm pretty sure that they could have raised this dog to be a best in show and this couple doesn't have any ailments. And they raised this dog to be like Cujo from the Stephen King book. The dog is nuts. The dog chases people around, snaps the heads off rabbits, bites little kids across the face, snarls, foams at the mouth. The owners refuse to leash it up. And uh, yeah, that's kind of a problem. But let me finish the story off okay so one day this dog actually bites me on the ankle in full view of the owners right and they do absolutely nothing they're just sitting in their backyard in their lawn chairs like they're watching a nascar race and they're watching their dog terrorize the entire neighborhood and then i get home get out of my car the dog charges me which is what it usually does but this time it bites me on the ankle right and I'm like, oh, shit, guys, your dog just bit me on the ankle. You know what she says from her backyard without any kind of remorse? No apology. She goes, oh, don't worry about it. She does that sometimes. And I'm like, really? That's your excuse? You're just saying your dog bites people. 
It's no big deal. All right. I think I get what you're saying. You're trying to say the mailman delivers mail. Domino's delivers pizza. Your dog, it just bites people. All right, I'll give you that. So when I take my five-year-old to the park and he beats somebody over the head with a baseball bat and the other parent's like, your kid just beat my kid over the head with a baseball bat. I'm just going to go, oh, little Johnny. That's what he does. He beats people with a baseball bat. It's all right. So here's the problem, dude. Here's the problem in this country, right? You need a license to do just about anything. They needed a license to purchase that dog. And when you're a bad parent or you're a psychopath, when you screw up a dog, it turns into Cujo and it bites the neighbors. But you needed a license to get that dog, right? One day, these people are going to have children. And there isn't going to be any background check, any test, or any license or application to do so. And here's the difference. When you fuck up raising a dog, it bites the neighbor. When you screw up raising a kid, he turns into Hannibal Lecter. Or the next Adolf Hitler. Or the guy that's going to start World War III by hitting a nuclear launch code. But yet we have no checks and balances or licenses or FBI background checks or none of it to have a kid. And if you screw up a kid, he turns up and he ends up turning into Stephen Paddock or Stephen McVeigh or even a Stephen <laughs> or even a Stephen Baldwin for that matter. A lot of bad Stevens out there. But yet we don't bat an eyelash. However, you can screw up a dog, it bites the neighbor. And if I called the police, which I didn't, the dog would have been euthanized. And I know euthanized sounds like a nice thing, like they're going to make the dog more youthful looking. No, they're going to murder the dog. And is it the dog's fault that it's a psychopath? No. It's a piss poor lack of training and parenting that made that dog a psychopath. So I'm not going to be the one that makes the call that ends this dog's life because the parents couldn't raise it properly. But let me remind you, they, need the, they needed a background check and a license to buy that puppy and then screw it up as an adult. But they're going to have kids, no questions asked. Yeah, let's let that slide, but let's make sure we cancel Count Dracula and Snuffleupagus. What are we doing here? It's literally like we're trying to vacuum the carpet and we're oblivious to the fact that the carpet we're vacuuming, the house that has the carpet that we're vacuuming, the friggin' roof is on fire. But we're focused on vacuuming the carpet in a house that's burning down. Our priorities are out of whack here, people. So why do we acquire a license to fish and to hunt and to rent a scooter, but we don't give anybody any checks or balances to have a kid? I don't get it. Do you? If you get it, maybe you can let me know so I can sleep at night. I'm John Ares. This has been episode 78 of the Views from the John podcast. Please don't get triggered by anything I said because I'll, I've said it once and I'll say it again. Just because I make light of situations doesn't mean I take it lightly. And I am a shit talker and I am a comedian. All right? So if you don't agree with anything I said, please, ah, you can hate me if you want. Everybody else does. Just please refrain from hitting the dislike button because it does take hours to put one of these things together and edit it. And then you just come along and go, eh, eh, eh. Ugh. Let me show, show me your YouTube channel so I can go and dislike every video, you punk. Eh. Anyways, everybody, I hope you are having a safe healthy and happy summer of 2021. I'm loving it. It's like 95 degrees here today. I got the AC blasting. I'm loving it. You guys have a kick-ass summer and thank you for tuning in to episode 78. We will see you on the next one whenever that might be. But until then, you guys take care of each other and remember to have your pet spayed or neutered. Remember to have your neighbor 
spayed or neutered because I'd rather have a bunch of wild dogs running out there biting kids than have a bunch of Adolf Hitlers running around, right? All right, everybody. That's it. We'll see you guys next time.